calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea raw and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it is pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast them forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. I, I just want to go back real quick before uh, before we move any further. I want to go back and, and, and read this first verse. It says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of uh, Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before thee. But instead of going to uh, uh, where God had told him, he went to Tarshish. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you for all things. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done. Lord, I'm asking you right now to bless us as we hear your word. Let your people receive your word. We thank you for what you're going to do. Miracles, signs, and wonders to follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. amen. Can you do me a favor and just holler, I got myself into this mess. No, you got to say it again. I got myself into this mess. For, uh, uh, lift up your hands and say, Lord, my heart is good ground for your word. Say it again, Lord, my heart is good ground for your word. One more time, Lord, my heart is good ground for your word. Bless me now, touch me now, deliver me now. I'm ready, I'm ready for your word. Come on, put those blessed hands together and give God some praise. Everybody, while I got myself into this mess. Take your seats, take your seats. I, I know deep that this is a hard sermon to preach because it's a self-evaluation ser sermon. It's something that we have to look at ourselves and not at others. And so in life, we are forced, uh, RJ, to make decisions. We're forced to make decisions. Sometimes uh, it's easy decision, decisions, things that we can handle. And then there are some hard decisions, the complicated ones that uh, hit you from all angles of complexities. And so uh, the hard decisions, and if you understand anything, Joel, the hard decisions, they weigh us down. Uh, it's a burden. It's a burden. Uh, if the truth be told, we don't always will uh, like making difficult choices. We don't like making difficult choices, especially the decisions where God says, I want you to go here. I want you to do this. I want you to say no to this person. I want you to say yes to this person. I want you to walk over here, Ida. I want you to take this job. Uh, because you have the factors, and this is what I want you to get, you have the factors of faith, risk, and obedience. I'll say it again. Faith, risk, and obedience. One more time. Faith, risk, and obedience. Everybody say faith, faith risk, risk, and obedience. 
faith in his word. You got to have faith in his word. If he's going to tell you to do something, you got to have faith in his word. Faith is nothing more than just having confidence in the God that you don't see, but know he's there and that he's going to manifest that which. Uh, which you have been praying for or you have put your faith to. You don't put your faith to resources. You put your faith to source. You, you get what I'm saying? You don't put your faith to resources. You put your faith to the source who can give you the resources. And so therefore you have faith in his word and then uh, you have risk. The, you risk the chance of succeeding or failing. You risk the chance of succeeding or failing. Here it is against the unknown. When God tells you to do something, you don't even know that you're going to fail at it. You don't see if you're going to fail at it. Well, your hope is, is that you'll win. Your hope is, is that you'll win. You're not, you're not sitting here saying that, okay, well, you know what, I have. And, and, and this is the crazy thing about faith and, and, and about the word of God. You know that the word of God, Lamont, will never fail. That's something that we know. But in the back of our minds, we got a 50-50 chance of, of believing that it's going to fail or it's going it, to succeed. See, that's how the cookie crumbles when you're moving in your humanity and not your spirituality. Talk, Robert. <laughs> You move it in your humanity and not your spirituality because humanity is saying, yes, you only got a 50-50 chance, but spirituality says it's already done. Yeah. You, you, you see what I'm saying? It's already, am I going too heavy too quick? It's already done. So therefore, Zar, we can't even, we, even though we are in humanity, we are wrapped in this corporeal being, which means that it's flesh. We are in the flesh, but here it is, uh, Scotty. We have to move by the spirit. We got to move by the spirit because if we move by the flesh, what we see will deter us from what we know is going to happen in the spirit realm. And so, therefore, uh, yes, it's faith, uh, is believing in his word, and then it's risk. You, you, you know, if we're moving in humanity, in our flesh, if we're looking from our worldly eyes, Sister uh, McNeil, then, yeah, there's going to be a 50-50 a chance, just like it's a one in a hundred chance of you playing the lotto and winning. But that don't stop y'all from going to the corner store or the bodega, sneaking in there, especially those who don't know you go to church, you sneak in there, you see, I know how it works, you go to the one that people don't really know that you go to church, and then you go in there and say, give me number one, two, three, uh, fifty, I don't even know how it works, but you know, and then some of us are so slick, we be like, no, you know what, just give me a scratch off. <laughs> Give me a scratch off. And, and so uh, it, it's a one in a hundred chance of you winning, but we still take that chance. It's a risk. It's a risk. It's a risk. And so uh, we already know, we already know uh, that it's a risk. But here it is. Uh, lastly, you must obey his word. You must obey his word. Whenever God tells you something, you must obey his word. So now you have to decide. You have to decide whether you say yes or no. Uh, you have to decide whether you obey or disobey. Because when God gives you instructions, you must realize, and I want you to catch this, that there are benefits and liabilities for your choices. There are benefits and liabilities for your choices. Let me say it one more time. I know I told you already it's going to be a hard sermon. There are benefits and liabilities for your choices. God never desires for you to neglect his instructions because the consequences can be devastating. The consequences can be devastating, but you'll always end up doing his will anyway. I know I just messed you up. Uh, Keith, the consequences are devastating, but guess what? You're going to do his will anyway. You, okay, let me say it one more time. Uh, because you think you're grown, and I know you're grown. I'm 45. You can't tell me nothing. I'm 50, y'all. I'm old enough, to be, old enough to be your granddaddy. Uh huh. Uh, but here it is, people of God. You're going to end up doing his will anyway. You won't end up doing his will anyway, and that's the irony. That's the catch. Regardless, you will do his will, and at the end of the day, his will will be done. 
<laughs> talk, Robert. At the end of the day, his will will be done. And I know it doesn't make any sense, but uh, here it is. His will will be done. And sometimes, here's the thing about it. Sometimes, and I want you to catch this, God has a way of intervening when we disagree with him. <laughs> I'm going too deep, too fast. It's, 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 I'm hitting them too early. He, he has a way of, 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 of interjecting himself when we disagree. And, and, and you, you know what? Like, Y'all looking at me like you never disagreed with God. You looking at me like you never, anybody in here has ever disagreed with God or it's just me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I need somebody to holler back at me and say, y'all, that's me. I, I, I'm saying it too. It's me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's me. You Y'all act like y'all never had a conversation where you said, no, I don't like that. No, uh, God, God, I can't do that. Mm -mm. You, 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 anybody in here never tried to walk in the opposite direction of God? Oh, y'all too spiritual. You, you see, that's the crazy thing, y'all. See, I know what it is. We got put on the front because we in front of people. But I know there's some people in here that has said in your mind when God has spoken your spirit, you did a moonwalk. <laughs> you put those feet in reverse and said, "Oh no, Jesus, not today." And, and, and he did a Kevin Hart and said, "You're gonna learn today." And you, you see what I'm saying? And, 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 so, and, and some of us, and, and you know, this is the crazy thing. If, if we ain't walk away, if we ain't walk in the opposite direction of God, we did like little kids and put our fingers in our ears so we don't have to hear what God said. <laughs> ah, have you ever uh, been in the place where what God said, it put you in a situation that should be easy for you to do, but it's problematic? Not because he said it, but it's what he wants you to do in what he said. Okay, all right. I, I, I hit you too hard. It, it, see, the problem ain't him saying it. It's what he wants you to do in what he said. Me telling my children to do the dishes ain't, and see, see, I can tell you, it do the dishes. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, no, let me change that. I can say, somebody do the dishes. <laughs> but here it is Jay, this is where the attitude comes in When I point to them And say you, do the dishes They ain't have a problem with me Making a general statement But as soon as I made it specific That's when they had a problem With what I said Because they don't want to do What I said And so, and, and so uh, I'm, I'm definitely I'm definitely cool uh, what Jesus saying or him saying stuff but it's what he wants me to do and what he said because I have a hard time listening when I don't want to do what you said <clears throat> yeah 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 and, and, and here's the crazy thing I heard what he said but that don't mean I want to do what he said <laughs> yeah yeah uh, it, it, it's the same thing you be like do this do this and they don't do it oh yeah did you hear me say I heard it but that don't mean I want to do it and so y'all never been there or y'all never been there. And, and so because what you said, and this is what it, and I want you to catch this because we're going to take flight in a second. But what you said or what God said seems impossible. It seems difficult. It seems unrealistic. But that's how God works sometimes. And I want you to catch this. That's how God works sometimes. He takes what we consider uh, an impossible situation uh, to show you that all things are possible. And you can, oh my God, and all you can do, and all you can do, and all you have to do is obey what he said. Amen. All things are possible. Can, 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 can you just shout that? All things are possible. All things are possible. Come on, you, 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 you got to say it like you mean it because this is going to be a testimony to where you're going because people don't see where you're going. Only you know where you're going, but they can't see it. And the reason why I, some people won't invest in you is because they don't see it. Wow. They don't see it. The reason why people talk negatively about you, uh, uh, towards your dream is because they can't see your dream coming to manifestation. But you know it's going to work out. 
And so, and so, and so you can't get discouraged because of what other people say. Right. Amen. You got to know what God has said. That's right. And if you know what God has said, then you know the impossible will become possible. So, yes, it's my God, and I want you to catch this, and I want you to write this down. God speaks possibilities in impossible circumstances. Y'all missed it. I wish I was somewhere. Y'all ain't hearing me. God speaks possibilities in impossible circumstances. Who says that when you have cancer that you can't be healed? That's when God steps in and says, I am your healer. Y'all you, you, missing what I'm saying. A tumor that should kill you don't kill you because God's hand is on you and it stops everything from spreading because God has already ordained. I am your healer. Something that should kill you won't kill you because possibilities are able. Possibilities can be manifested. Possibilities are real, even in impossible situations. Some of you shouldn't even deserve, you, should, you shouldn't even get the promotion because you don't even have all the credentials, but God favored you. Amen. Yeah, this is my real church act. God favored you, and the reason why he favored you is because he walks with you. He walks with you. So it don't matter uh, uh, your background or your history or even the baggage that you have. When God's hand is on you, it'll open up doors for the rest of your life. Is there anybody in here happy that God's hand is on you? I want you to just holler at your boy. Tap yourself. Don't look at your neighbor. Tap yourself and encourage yourself and say, God's hand is on me. God's hand is on me. See, you will see the handiwork of God when you walk with God. And here it is, who specializes in impossibilities. God specializes in, here it is, failures. Yeah. God specializes in the untainable. And God, God, God specializes in the unworkable. God specializes in the unreasonable uh, probabilities. Because the thing that should not work out, because sometimes, here it is, we all know that one plus one equals two but God will take one uh, oh my God, he'll take one even if it don't equal two he'll take one and make one and make it equal two, what am I trying to tell you sometimes you're missing a part of yourself and God will make up that part just so you can be what he has called you to be so don't ever tell me that I'm less than, Norman don't ever let anybody tell you that you'll never make it that you'll never be anything, that you'll always be like your mama, like your daddy like your granddaddy no baby the buck stops here with me because i believe that god will change things and make my things possible can you just shout all things are possible god i felt that you may not have but i felt it because um i'm not supposed to be here i'm supposed to be there and so, uh, when God can change a situation from a boy in the ghetto <laughs> and give him, give him a status that can change nations, that can change the world, that can change communities, don't tell me that God uh, is not a God uh, that can't change things, that can't uh, uh, switch up things, that can't make things possible. Yeah, uh, anybody born in Newburgh ain't supposed to be who they are. <laughs> because if you look at the, if you hear, if you listen to the people from the outside in, they'll say, oh man, that's a dark cloud. Oh, I'm scared to do this. Oh, oh Newburgh is this. But you don't know I live here. And if I live here, I'm the beacon of light in this community. And so I am the example of what God can do if you submit yourself unto God. He said that if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he will exalt you in due season. I came to tell somebody on here, in here on today that your due season is almost up. Uh, get ready. Here it is. Get ready for things to change because see, here it is. And here it is. People been looking at you as less than but thank God that he made you more than. This is what I'm saying. He made you valuable. He made you worth it. And so when, whenever you walk around, don't 
don't you dare walk around with your head hanging low. I don't care if you in front of the president, in front of Republicans, in front of Democrats. I don't care what, oh my God, what status you have, how much money you have in the bank. I'm still blessed. Is there anybody in here that realizes that you don't need money, you don't need cars, you don't need houses, you don't need land to have favor because I can connect with somebody who will give me what I need and get me to where I need to be all because of God. Is there anybody in here happy that you got the favor of God on you? I need you to just hit yourself and say, I got favor. So God is an expert. He's an expert in these situations. How, how, how can you say that? Everybody say expert. expert. No, you got to wake up and say it. Everybody say expert. expert. God is an expert in situations. Uh, if, if you've ever been, uh, if you've ever been without a father or ever been without a mother, uh, you ain't supposed to, uh, you, ain't, you ain't even supposed to be here. You ain't even supposed to make it. But God is an expert. Amen. I just want to encourage somebody. It really may not be for you. It may be for somebody that's listening to me streaming. Uh, because uh, everybody didn't grow up with a silver spoon in their mouth. Every, everybody ain't grow up. Uh, everybody ain't grow up in the best uh, situations. But here it is. God is an expert. He's an expert at turning the tables. He, he's an expert at, 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 at opening up doors. He's an expert. He's an expert. Uh, Oprah ain't even supposed to be where she is. Look at everything that she went through. And, 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 and all the people that told her, no, baby, you can't, you can't, you ain't gonna own no network. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't gonna be on television. I seen his head fall. You ain't gonna be on television. But here it is, people of God. He's an expert in situations. See, your head ain't even supposed to be, your head ain't supposed to be up, your head is supposed to be down because of, 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 of the cloud that is supposed to be over you. But God is an expert in situations. See, see, some of you are, are preemie. Some of you ain't even supposed to be here uh, on this earth, walking this earth. Some of you have some conditions that, 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 that was supposed to kill you at birth. But God is an expert. In these situations, y'all missing what I'm saying. He's an expert in these situations. Some of you've been through abuse and you ain't even supposed to be here, but God is an expert in these situations. And how can I say he's an expert in these situations? Because he ain't let you die from the thing that should have killed you. God is an expert in these situations. How can you say that? Uh, because uh, uh, that's why we can take Moses. <laughs> Moses came with a whole bunch of complaints, Scotty. He came uh, with a whole bunch of complaints. Y'all let me take my time. Moses uh, came with a whole bunch of complaints. And, and, and he said, he said, he said, he said, God, uh, no, I, I'm slow with speech. I, I can't, I can't, I can't speak like other people. Uh, but God still said, go to Pharaoh. He said, go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. He said, not only that, but I'm going to give you the tools. I'm going to give you the resources. I'm going to connect you to somebody. If you ever get scared and you feel that your speech isn't eloquent, isn't, isn't, isn't befitting for the time, I'm going to give you your brother Aaron. I'm, and he will speak for you. So all you got to do is tap Aaron on the shoulder and say, Aaron, say it. Uh -huh. Say it. And he'll say, let my people go. See, the thing about it, people of God, Michelle, the thing about it is that uh, Moses said that he had a stuttering problem. Problem. He was slow to speech. But here it is. All you got to do is put yourself in the hands of God. Some of us, we don't have stuttering speech problems. We have a stuttering problem with walking with God. And, and so, oh my God. And so, and so our feet are stuttering because God is telling us to move, but we don't want to have the faith to walk in the place that He tells us to walk. But do do you not know that God will equip you if you just put your feet in motion and just start walking so God can say, 
dog, look at me, I did that for you. And the thing that he blesses you with, and here it is, people of God, the thing that he blesses you with, don't you ever take the uh, credit for it. Don't you ever sit there and say, I did. Mm -hmm. oh, this is all mine. No, you don't ever want to say that. What you need to say is to God be the glory for everything that he has done. And when you get the credit back to God, God will bless you with more. Is there anybody in here happy that you are about to get more because you gave your first fruits to God and everything that he gave you, you gave the glory back unto him. Because the Bible says this, it's not, it's the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Yeah, we marvel at his works, but we thank him for what he has done. Is there anybody in here grateful uh, for what God has done for you? It may not be what other people have. It may not be to the standards of other people. But I thank God he blessed me with what I have today. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have still been in the same place where the enemy was trying to consume me. But I thank God that he gave me a chance to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And what is the redeemed of the Lord supposed to say? Thank you. What is the redeemed of the Lord supposed to say? Thank you, Jesus. What is the redeemed of the Lord supposed to say? Glory to God. What is the redeemed of the Lord supposed to say? Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here that will open up your mouth as the redeemed and say, Hallelujah. 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 You was a crackhead. You need to start saying hallelujah because he delivered you from drugs. He delivered you from alcoholism. He delivered you from an accident. He protected you from diseases. Is there anybody in here that got a hallelujah in your spirit? I need you to lift up your voice without an organ, without drums, but just with your mouth. I need you to open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for protecting my kids. Hallelujah. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you for opening up my eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you for keeping me in my right mind. Hallelujah. I need about 50 of y'all to open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. 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 That's why I didn't die. Because I still got to hear praise inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak it over my marriage. Hallelujah. I speak it over my children. Hallelujah. I speak it over my child. Hallelujah. You're waiting for me to give you something else. I want you to open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can't praise him in your downtime, don't expect God to bless you with anything. Because he said uh, he inhabits the praise of his people. I need somebody in here that got a hallelujah in your soul. Because out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And if there's anybody in here that got a hallelujah in your spirit, don't worry about the people that's sitting down. Don't worry about the people that's being distracted. You go for yourself and you start saying hallelujah because you know what God has done for you. Only you know how God has freed you. Only you know. I need you to open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Shout it again. Shout it again. Shout it again. He's kept you this far. You need to open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. I wish I had a real church in here. Hallelujah. Sometimes 
sometimes we get too big that we don't feel the presence of God. We got to dance around it. But we need to take time out like the old storefront churches used to do and start investing in their sight and start getting so that we can feel the presence of God. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. 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 Is there anybody in here grateful? Is there anybody in here grateful? Is there anybody in here appreciative for what God has done for you? You're not in the place where you want to be, but I thank God he's ordering my steps to get me to where I need to be. Is there anybody in here grateful? I need you to open up your mouth and shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the presence of God. Shout it again. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you all week. Thank you. I said thank you. He's opened up doors for you and you forgot to say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, some of us act like the lepers that he healed. Only one turned back and said thank you. I need us to be the one that turns back and say thank you. Is there anybody in hell? I need you to open up your mouth. Don't worry about who you sitting next to. They got to go for themselves. I need you to say thank you. Only you the Lord for. Only you know what you're grateful for. Only you know what you're appreciative for. Only you know what God has brought you out of. Only you know what God has picked you up out of. Is there anybody in hell that got to thank you in your spirit? I need you to open up your mouth and shout thank you. I said shout thank you. I said shout thank you. I said shout thank you. Thank you for what? Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for prospering me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But most of all, thank you for being God. Thank you for being my Lord. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for being my ruler. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your faithfulness. Is there anybody in here that will open up your mouth and I Sunday best, but I need you to 
get out your seat and open up your mouth and shout thank you thank you thank you thank you because situations could have been worse but I thank you I could have died a long time ago but I thank you I should have died in the club when that straight bullet hit somebody else standing right next to me that person died I lived but I thank you I thank you, I thank you, if there ain't anybody in here, you don't have to be in the same situation as me, but every one of us got something to thank God for, I need you to open up your mouth and holler, thank you, thank you, oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, we were having a block party, back in and somebody came by and sprayed bullets but it didn't touch me is there anybody in here happy that you got another chance I need you to open up your mouth and holler thank you y'all look at me as a church kid but you don't know the hell I've been through you don't the things I put myself in But I got I gotta thank him I gotta praise him Yeah Yeah Some of y'all Used to be The ones in the crack house Making the things With your chemistry But look at God He didn't allow you want to say thank you you want to say thank you you want to say thank you because some of y'all we used to be alcoholics but he protected we all live he protected we all kidneys today anybody in here that got a thank you in your spirit I need you to open up your mouth and shout thank you y'all still ain't ready I ain't preaching no more this is it I said shout thank you we need to start giving God the praise and all the glory that belongs unto him I said shout thank you I said shout thank you no time to say it thank you Yes. 
this uh, like this uh, because you're coming out uh, I didn't say grab it uh, I said do like this uh, you're coming out uh, is there anybody in here uh, ready to come out of your mess uh, ready uh, I need you to open up your mouth uh, and shout I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready Because I walked away from you God forgive me Because I didn't do what you told me to do But I'm black Jesus Thank you for saving me Thank you for delivering me Thank you for healing me Thank you I said thank you I said thank you I said thank you Thank you. And why are you thinking? Uh, because God will change the circumstance uh, just to save your behind. Uh, did you hear what I say? Uh, God will change the circumstances uh, just to get you. Uh, just to show you uh, that you need to walk with him. Uh, Jonah uh, thought that he was going uh, to Tarshish. Uh, but here it is. Uh, he got so into himself uh, that God said uh, I told you to go to Nineveh uh, obedience uh, is better than sacrifice uh, so when you do uh, the things outside of God uh, it brings sacrifice uh, what am I trying to tell you uh, you gotta stop looking at your neighbor uh, you gotta stop looking at your friend uh, and say it's me oh Lord uh, stand in the need of prayer Not my mother Not my father Not my sister Not my brother But it's me, oh Lord I got myself into this mess God See, this is where we mess up We need to ask God to forgive us God Forgive me can you do me a favor? Lift up your hands and say, God, forgive me. Say, God, forgive me. Say, God, forgive me. I'm sorry, Lord. God, you told me to go. So now I'll say, yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, Lord, in your spirit, I need you to open up your mouth and shout, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Y'all still ain't saying. I said, shout, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. But I'll say yes. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Open up your mouth and shout it yeah. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can you do me a favor? Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't blaming you, but I got myself into this mess. That neighbor didn't like you. Can you look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, I Sorry for hating on you, but I got myself into this mess. How can you say that? Because Jonah, God told him to go to Nineveh, but he got on the boat to go to Tarshish because he wanted to flee from the presence of God. But when God tells you to do something, do you not know that God is ubiquitous, that God is omnipresent, that God is everywhere. You can't hide from God. God will meet you at your lowest, and God will meet you at your highest. So yeah, go I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, because God Y'all need to holler with me And say God is with me God is with me God is with me 
Even when I was in jail, God was with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when I was in prison in my mind, God was with me. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. Can somebody in here holler, God? Oh, still they say that. What's the name above everything? Who's your creator? Who's your sustainer? Who's your way maker? Can you just holler, God? God did it for me. God did it for me. God did it for me. And what had happened was, Jonah, he said, y'all getting mad. I'm rushing over And it feels like The whole boat is going to tip over But I got good news to tell you If you still don't want me on this boat Throw me over Because I'll hide from God there But do you not know That God has sent a big fish To save your behind Even though You want to hide from the presence of God God said not so You gonna do my will You got yourself into this mess But God will change the circumstances To save you Is anybody in here Happy that God Has changed the circumstances Is there anybody in here Happy that God Stepped in on time Y'all still ain't working with me When you thought you were gonna lose your mind God stepped in He interjected He interceded And you mean to tell me That we gonna step into the presence of God And fold our arms And cross our legs And act all sedity and sanctify No, baby to praise the Lord for Can you do me a favor? We getting out of here now Can you do me a favor? Grab your neighbor Grab your neighbor by the hand And say neighbor You got so much To thank the Lord for Keep grabbing that neighbor Shake it like a salt shaker And say neighbor so much to thank God for. I know you've been down. I know you've been discouraged. I know you've been dispirited. I know you've been disheartened. But shake that neighbor's hand because the Bible says when two or three touch as in agreement, it shall be done. Shake that neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, you so much to thank the Lord for. Now look that neighbor in the eye and say, What you gonna do? You got so much to thank the Lord for. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Now you need to answer him and say, I'll praise him. I'll praise him. I'll praise him, I'll praise him, I'll praise him, I'll praise him, is there anybody in here ready to praise your God, I need you to get out yourself, even though I put myself in this mess, I need you to get out yourself, and say I'm about to praise him, I'm going to Praise him, I'm gonna praise him, I'm gonna praise him. Yeah, yeah, Praise her. On the count of three, on the count of three, 
Lift up your hands. 